I was doing a play the last season at the Phoenix Rep in New York, and I was there with Diana Wiest and some of the cast from the Guthrie that had joined us off Broadway. And um, I, got, I got a script from my agent, and Steve Cannell had written this, this pilot, and I, I read it. I wasn't very interested in doing television at the time. I was, uh, my thinking was that I was going to stay in New York and just uh, uh, concentrate on the theater. Um, but I read the script, I thought it was fabulous. Made me laugh, which is hard to do. Wait a minute, what are we supposed to do? You are the teacher. Well, Mr. Maxwell, we have to talk about this. You talk about it. Let them put you in a buck bin, not me. Hey, wait a minute. You gotta at least exchange phone numbers or something. Oh. And uh, I said I was interested. So Steve flew to New York, and he sat uh, through a performance, and uh, we went out to dinner, and I, I agreed that I would come out and, and do the project. You know, it was uh, certainly more money than I'd make in the theater in two years to, to work for six weeks. So I said, sure. At the time, I had a, a new 10-month-old son and, you know, struggling. So... I thought it would, you know, I talked it over with my agent. He said, well, I'll probably run one, maybe get picked up for four, and then it goes away, and then you go back to New York. I said, okay. But uh, lo and behold, it, he shocked me. He aired it, I think it was after the Super Bowl. One night it was aired after Super Bowl, and we became this giant hit, and uh, the rest is history. I thought the pilot was charming. It appealed to the 14-year-old kid in all adult men. What if? That was always the great scenario. What if? What if it could happen? But the trick in the, in the show was to play it for real, you know. And I think that's where the comedy came from. It was just a charming show. The cool thing about playing Ralph and what, what appealed to me about the series at the time was that it was a real guy in an absurd situation. The whole premise was based on this guy getting this, uh, uh, the ability to sit in this supersonic jet and fly it, but he doesn't know how to do it. He can take off in it and then it's just like he has to figure out what to do with it. Thinking back on the pilot, he didn't know how to take off in the suit the very first time and this, this little boy sees him trying to get off the ground and he says, no, you're doing it all wrong. You have to run and, and then jump and it was very funny. You know, it, it harkened back to when we were all kids, which is why I said, I mean, it appealed to all the 14-year-old boys and, and adult men, you know. When I looked at myself in that suit, I felt my uh, my spirit just drain away. I, if I would have had a tail, it would have gone up underneath me because it was horrible, just horrible. I mean, I thought of myself as a serious, dramatic actor, you know, and I saw myself in the suit and I said, oh, good God, look at that. I will never, ever work again. <laughs> so it was pretty real. That was kind of the reaction I, I insinuated there when I looked in the mirror on the pilot. And I always felt the same way about the suit. I mean, it was horrible having to put that thing on. I hated it. You know, people said at the, at the close of the show, some three years later, they said, well, didn't you, didn't you get the suit? Didn't you want to have one for yourself? And I said, good God, maybe to burn it in effigy, perhaps, but not to keep as a memento. You know, that's how I felt. Ralph was a good guy. He was an average guy who didn't want to get involved. He didn't want to save the world, but push came to shove. You know, with his back against the, cor against the wall, he would do what was right. Like any American, like any guy, any woman, if you're the only one that can do something about it and you know it, you're gonna, you're gonna go do it. And if it meant that he had to put this costume on and go do it, that he was gonna go do that. He didn't want to, but that's what he would go do. I remember the first year being the most fun. It was all kids. We were all in our 20s and just having a great time. I just remember laughing from the time I got to the set in the morning until we went home that night, just laughing all day long, and, and, and particularly the first season. It was just way, way fun. And Connie was really a great comedian in the freshest, funniest sense. Always made me laugh. Loved to make her laugh, particularly the scenes when it was just her and I. Driving sequences, I remember, would take forever because you got to the point, and it probably happens on a lot of sets, where you can just look at somebody and give them a look and just break out into hysterics. We did that all the time. I thought the chemistry between Bob Culp and Connie and I all legitimately really worked. I mean, I hated Bob Culp 
for the first two or three weeks, just as people. I think in the second week or so, I knocked on his trailer door and I said, look, Bob, we're going to be together a long time. Let's try and work it out, okay? I mean, let's duke it out or let's talk about it, but let's figure it out. And we did, and I think we, we came to some sort of detente, and we were able to work together for the next three years. But it was good. I mean, there was a real uh, um, attention uh, that, that worked, I think. And what I remember about Bob specifically is that he taught me how to write. Bob was a very good writer and a very good director. He clearly had a lot to do, particularly in the early part of the show, with shaping the dynamics on the set in terms of blocking. And, and uh, he was very helpful in that regards. I, I learned a lot from him as a, a teacher and a mentor watching him work. I had no idea how physical it was going to be. We were always on trampolines, or at that time, I remember hanging off a helicopter strut, untethered in, just running up, grabbing the helicopter and taking off. And, uh, oh my God, the producers would have my head if that ever happened today. We did some very hairy stunts. Dennis Madalone, who was uh, well-known in the industry, was our stunt coordinator and did a lot of those stunts, was my double. And <laughs> long black hair and a big nose and handsome guy. Handsome, I will say. But, uh, but was, in terms of looks, was the antithesis of me. But he did it, and God, he was a lot of fun. We had a good time. Very good stuntman. Several times I remember turning to my stand and saying, well, he's dead. He has to be dead. And then he would emerge. And it was challenging to do the effects. And even in the short period of time that we were shooting, it really evolved because the first season, I ended up on a stage at Paramount on this huge stage that was completely painted blue. And they'd put me in these wires and they would fly me from one end of this giant stage all the way to the other. They'd swoop me down and up. And, and it was frightening just frightening being 35 feet up over concrete when they're doing this, you know. And, um, and at the same time, it, it, it was exhilarating. And you think, well, nothing's ever going to happen. And yet I remember one time when, they were, when this was working and that one of the cables snapped. And there I was hanging in the middle of the air, you know, spinning on my side going, oh, my God. You know, and they didn't have any nets or anything down there at the time. And then the next season, the evolution in this was that they started just putting me on a platform. It was the same thing that they were shooting Chris when he was on the, the Superman. And then they would move the camera around me and fly it in and out. Uh, instead of moving me, they would move the camera around it. And that was pretty, pretty interesting. You shoot a complete episode in seven days, right? Well, Bob and Connie always got a day off or a day and a half off during that time on a show because every week I'd be on blue screen or I'd have to go be on a stage to do a lot of this flying stuff. So I was exhausted. I never got a break. I thought that the, the green guys, that's right, I'm just remembering now, the green guys. Bill called them the green guys. I thought they were pretty cool. Thinking back at the, the pilot episode, I thought it was pretty neat at that time the uh, special effects. I thought they spent the money and they tried to do it right. I thought it was really intriguing. I thought it was a very, very good pilot. I don't think I really had much in the way of an evolution of Ralph Hinckley. I expressed to the writers, to Steve Cannell and the people at the network, how I'd like to see it him used. I mean, I wanted to go more toward using, it, uh, using this character as, as a way of really uh, satirizing society. We had, it was such a great device and uh, they ended up wanting us to chase monsters through sewers. And I think that's really what ultimately uh, killed the show, is that uh, they wanted us to go that way, and Bob and I, and I think Connie too, we, we wanted to go that way. We wanted to get more real with it and, and deal with real issues and, and things and, have, and poke fun at that. And I think that the, the, the network and, and the powers that be there, they had their reasons, and they wanted to see us um, chase monsters and appeal to a much l younger contingent. Well, there was such a great sense of humanity about the show, and I think we all wanted to explore that more than just be a cartoon. People remember me for Greatest American Hero. It depends on what part of the world I am or country, you know, but, but that's mainly what, I, what people still remember me for, you know, amongst a few other things, you know, Carrie and a couple of our big Wednesday. If I'm in some of the beach communities, people remember me for that. 
or New York, you know, Pippin or some of the theater I've done back there, but mainly it's Greatest American Hero. Sure. And I still have all my hair, and it's not as curly, but it's fairly soon the same as it was. My most vivid memory of the show was the, uh, the joy that it gave to other people. People come up to me all the time, even now, and they just gush at uh, what great fun they had watching the show. That's got to be the best, you know. I mean, that's why we're all entertainers. We want people to, to laugh and to cry and to, to feel something. And this made people feel happy, you know.